Hello, this is going to be one of the most valuable and important videos that I've ever made on this channel because I'm pretty much giving you my entire set of experiences and career in one nice concise package. So if you like the intro commercial, if you like my style of videos, if you like the way I kind of do things here, then this is going to be the ultimate five step guide on how to make board game commercials. So for all of you creators out there, this one's for you. Now, first off, thank you to Panasaurus Games for sponsoring this video. If you want to pick up a copy of their amazing game, it is linked down below. Secondly, I just launched a Patreon yesterday, so if you're interested in that, if you want more behind the scenes content, if you want more extensive trainings on different techniques, if you want more of a one on one, more than what I offer on YouTube and just join a fun, engaging community, I think it might be worth your time to check out the Patreon page also linked down below. Let's get started. Step one, you need to have an effective plan. What do I mean by that? First off, you really need to play the game multiple times because the more times you play the game, then the more you immerse yourself in the theme, the more you understand the different actions and get a feel for overall how the game flows. This is going to dictate how you're going to structure your video and it gives you a very good lead on where to start as well. Next, I would really suggest that you ask the creator, the publisher, whoever you're working with to make this commercial, their overall goals. I know I talked about creative control in revamped, but you really need to get a good sense of balance when you are planning this video. Before even starting a video, you need to ask them some really important key information. For example, you need to know how long it's going to be, and it might also be helpful to figure out which platform it's going to be hosted on. Is it going to be a 15 second Instagram video commercial? Is it going to be a 30 second Facebook ad, a one minute YouTube overlay? There are a ton of different platforms and where this video can be hosted, which will in turn affect how you're going to edit your video as well. Imagine you film your entire video, edit the whole thing to realize that it was supposed to be formatted for Instagram. Now you have to redo everything because more than likely if it was for an Instagram video, well, those dimensions are completely vertical. So it's going to cut out half your footage. You want to avoid all that and make sure it's clear from the get go. What dimensions am I filming for? And the last thing I would suggest that you clarify with your publisher before you start is to also figure out what their overall goals are. I know the overall goal is to sell the product, but sometimes they want to include different uh, forms of text inside their commercial. Sometimes they want you to state specific things. Sometimes they want a specific component as a hero shot and kind of like the overall main star of the show, hence the hero shot. Maybe they already have an idea about what they want for their very first frame or what their last frame is going to be. All of those things are going to drastically change your video. So make sure that you have all of that in mind and clarified before you start. Okay, so play the game multiple times, figure out your time limits, figure out your video dimensions, figure out what their overall goals are, clarifying specific shots. Once you have all that planned, you are setting yourself up for success. Step two, you need to ask yourself this very question. What is my 30 second story? And that is a very difficult question to answer because since it's such a short time frame, you have no time to get your story and your point across. For me, not just in commercials, but in my cinematic showcases, I tend to make my videos in this shape. I start off first with kind of like a slow setup and it gives an overview of all the components or maybe like the box art. So you want to establish a scene. What are they looking at? What's the overall board game theme? A question that you sometimes get, especially for people that are new to the hobby or maybe aren't familiar with the particular board game is, well, what am I looking at? If you just punch into the components right away, people may not realize that it's a board game, especially if they're coming from outside the board game hobby. So I establish a theme, give a general overview of what this game or what this video is about, and then show all the mechanics, show all the interesting, cool, really exciting parts about the game. And then as it slows down, that's when you leave your lasting impression. And for me, I like to tie in the box art again. So it goes full circle. I start off with the box art and then I end with the box art as well. Step three, you want to make your shots interesting. Let me show you something. Silver and gold comes with oops, four dry erase markers and a deck of cards. That is it. That is all you have to work with. And that's not to downplay the game at all. It's super fun and satisfying. That is to make fun and kind of poke fun at like the filming cinematography side of filming this commercial because you have only two things to work with, a deck of cards and dry erase markers. So strictly from a video making, filmmaking standpoint, if I were to hand this to you, this would be the ultimate challenge is how do you, how do you make this interesting? No minis, no giant box, no uh, standout components, no 
metal tokens. You can have the best camera, red 15 grand camera with the best lens and overall just top of line gear. If you don't know how to use your equipment and you don't know what you're doing, it's not gonna save you now. It doesn't matter what you're working with. If you don't understand all these camera techniques and how to really utilize your tools and figure out you know, composition and all those things related to filmmaking and photography and so forth, now you can't hide it. And that's why it made this challenge especially, especially fun for me. So back to the question, what can you do to make your shots interesting? I have a couple tips for you. The first tip I have for you is to use a hook. A hook is going to instantly grab your audience's attention. And for that, it also involved planning because I needed to order this treasure chest. I like search and search for the perfect treasure chest that was going to fit the dimensions of silver and gold perfectly in the, in the box itself. So for my opening shot, it was instantly the chest. Automatically it establishes a theme, which is you are searching for treasure. And then I paired this with sound design and a nice transition. So I had the lock pick sound effect, I had the hinge, and then as the treasure chest opened, it wasn't what was actually inside. Instead, it was opening up to the next frame. So instantly, the idea here was to grab the audience's attention and immerse them to theme within the first five seconds. If you're interested in the masking transition, I did talk about it in this video here. Number two, you want to use a variety of shots. Just because they're board games, we're automatically inclined to punch in and use only macro shots, but you wanna avoid that. You wanna use a variety of shots, which is why I also mixed in some wide angle shots to establish a scene. I also mixed in a couple of medium shots, and there are also a variety of movements and the way the camera pans from different angles and so forth in order to keep the entire 30 seconds as interesting as possible. A third tip I have for you is to use foreground to pan your camera across. I know this shot right here didn't make it in the final edit, but what I love to implement in my videos, um, what I do very often, is I put like a tripod or even the box right in front of the lens, and then your focus is on whatever is behind it, so like the components. Uh, in this case, it was the cards in the background, and as your camera pans across, you see the tripod kind of just moving from the side. And it also provides some nice flexibility because in post, I can now, as I pan the camera across the tripod, instead of just going to the other side of the tripod, I can then mask it into the next clip. So that's just some variety. Even though I didn't use it in this particular video, I still wanted to show you and tell you about it, at least so you have it in your toolkit. I love it because it makes your footage nice and dreamy and very, very cinematic. And I have two more tips for you. The next one is to pair your clips with sound design. Sound design is so important and you should really not neglect it, especially since like they're products, you would automatically assume like, oh, they're inanimate objects. Why would we uh, include sound? But in reality, there are a ton of sounds you can pair with board games. How the miniatures slide across the board, the dice rolling. In this case, I used the marker, like actually writing the dry, with the dry erase. Actually writing with the dry erase marker, that's a sound by itself. The lock of the treasure chest, the hinge, all of those are prime areas you can use to pair with sound. Overall, when you pair sound with clips, even for products like this, it makes your video very immersive. Silver and gold, even in the box art and across all the cards, all about coins, right? So that's why I use coins both as a transitionary point and also uh, paired with sound design. Those really add and really sell the whole silver and gold theme. Okay, so we made an effective plan. We figured out our 30 second story. We made interesting shots. Step four is to ask yourself, what is going to keep my audience's retention the whole way through? Let's take a quick step back. Everyone wants to skip commercials. So how do you avoid that? One way I like to do it is to include little attention grabbers, little mini hooks sprinkled across the video. For example, halfway through the video, I include these back-to-back -back transitions as the camera pans down the table. You don't see what's actually below the table. Instead, as it goes down, it goes into the next clip, which is the same thing, but with different components. And then it goes down again, leading up to yet another scene. And right after that, I go into describing one key mechanism of silver and gold, which is chaining combos back-to-back. -back. But then I don't explain the entire mechanism in one frame. Instead, I explain it as it goes from clip to clip. Chain bonus after bonus. So see how it kind of weaves in back to back. So you have an interesting transition going to the same parallel transition, going into one mechanism, but you only explain half of it, and then going to yet another mechanism. Little details here add up to an overall clean aesthetic of the overall video. What's key here is to keep building anticipation and keeping up your momentum. You don't want to start off with like a really strong hook, and then all of a sudden your video kind of just plateaus and sloughs off, right? You want to finish on a strong note. So ideally you want to start with a strong hook, maybe keep it a little bit angled and then keep it up all the way until the very end, back when you tie it back up to the intro. And just to reiterate in case my point didn't come across all the way through, but that is to keep up the momentum and keep the audience on their toes. And step five today, the final step for today, a very simple one, but still a very important one. And that is to tie the entire video together. The finishing step is to think about what is your lasting impression? What is your final shot? Like I mentioned earlier, I always like to finish up and wrap up with the box, the box art. 
And then in this shot in particular, I kept it to the left, kept a nice green gradient to the back, and then just solid colors all around so it really accents the box by itself. I like to avoid any kind of patterns or anything that would distract away from the box since this is the final impression that you're giving to your audience. And then of course I kept room on the right side for the company logo. Uh, different publishers will want different things. Again, like I said in your planning video, make sure you get all that sorted out in the beginning before you even start this. But sometimes they'll want like, oh, you know, sold on Amazon or sold at a different store or wherever. And sometimes maybe they even want an included price as well. So square that away in the beginning so you have everything in mind for your final shot. And boom, there you go. Five steps for making a solid board game commercial. I hope as always that you found this video helpful. Comment down below if you like what I did with silver and gold with having this minimalistic set of components to work with. In the future, I think it'd be really fun to host a little video contest about everyone doing their own mini board game commercials as well around one game. But just spin out some ideas. So again, if you like my content, please consider subscribing and check out the Patreon page. But with that, have fun creating. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.